uh, I mean, of all the things I've figured out in my life, this is up there in terms of one of the most powerful things that one can learn very quickly, is how to frame a conversation. And we're only part of the way through. So let's, let's talk about sloppiness, which is really part of bias. But it's, it, there's an, it, it'll help you in the framing even more. So let's, let's take uh, the positive. So we want to be as even-handed, as unbiased as possible. We want to look at the pros and cons of anything. And part of that is we need to look at, we need to look precisely at how large the pros are and how large the cons are. So imagine you're, you're making a big decision involving your child, like whether and how to vaccinate a child for a certain kind of uh, disease. And this is a big kind of decision. One thing you have to do is you absolutely have to be willing to look at both benefits and side effects of vaccination. Because if you're not willing to look at both, you can't make an informed decision. The other thing you have to do, it's not enough to just say, oh, it has some benefits, it has some side effects, how do I choose? You need to know the magnitude of the benefits or get the best idea you can. And so, for instance, if it's a life-saving vaccine with minimal side effects, that's different than a vaccine that didn't do much work that had major side effects. And my point is not any particular stance on the issue uh, overall or any particular one. It's just this is how you have to think about an important decision, to look at the extent of the benefits and the extent of the side effects. Now imagine somebody, imagine you decided that there is a certain vaccine that was very beneficial for your child and that there was a side effect potential, but it, it was like there's a certain percentage chance of getting a rash, but you didn't think there was a serious risk and there was a huge benefit. And then, but somebody else was biased against vaccines and they didn't look at all at the positives and all they looked for was negative. So then they would say, don't you know that vaccines have side effects? What are you, a vaccine side effect denier? How can you support vaccines? Don't you know that 97% of doctors agree that vaccine side effects are real? I don't know if you recognize that language at all, but this is the language that is used against fossil fuels. So with fossil fuels, you have to look at benefits and you have to look at side effects. And people will sometimes say climate change is real, which in effect means there is some warming side effect of fossil fuels, and they act like that means fossil fuels are bad. But it depends. If the side effect is mild and the benefit is huge, then it was, it's a good thing to use. It's like the life-saving vaccine. On the other hand, if Al Gore is right, and fossil, there, are actually, there are actually technologies that can replace gasoline using solar and wind somehow for less than a dollar a gallon, which he claimed 10 years ago now. He still hasn't produced this, but he claimed this, that he could replace gasoline for less than a dollar a gallon using solar and wind. Like if he's right about that, and he's right that we're gonna have 20 foot sea level rises the next several decades if we keep using fossil fuels, then it would be a horrible decision, right? It would be like the medicine with no benefit, with very little benefit and a huge amount of negative side effect. Now the problem in the discussion is that the bias goes along with sloppiness. So it's not just that people make up negative things about fossil fuels, or the, though I think they do, and that they ignore positive things about, about fossil fuels, though I think they do, it's that they exaggerate hugely and they're very sloppy and vague about it. So they'll just say things like, oh, climate change is real, but they won't be clear whether they mean sea level rises of 20 feet in a couple decades or two feet in 100 years, which two feet in 100 years would be much, uh, I don't think would be a problem. We've experienced that many times in, in human history. So there's no way to make a good decision if we're sloppy about things. We need to be precise. Now, in discussions, people are sloppy as much or more than they're biased. They'll use, say all kinds of things. Like, one thing is just, you hear about solar and wind, they'll just say, oh yeah, well, uh, solar and wind uh, are, no, solar and wind work really well, or something like that. Or they'll say like, uh, you know, these technologies work. That's probably the sloppiest thing. They'll say like, we have alternatives, and they work. 
Okay, but what does that mean? Does that mean that they work for seven billion people, for seven million people? Uh, does that mean that they can fly a plane or power a diesel tractor? And in the case of those last two things, like absolutely not, there's nothing resembling that. So it's, it's really vague to just say, oh yeah, I, let's get rid of fossil fuels because climate change is real and we have workable alternatives. Right? That's, it's so vague and sloppy as to be plausible, but it's, it's just nonsense. It would be like saying, well, you know, let's get rid of vac vaccines and antibiotics because they have side effects and we have alternatives that can cure diseases. Okay, but can they cure all of those diseases? No, they can't. That's why tons of people died before uh, we had them. So part of the premise is we can be biased against fossil fuels and nuclear and hydro. That's part of it. Another part of that is it's also, as long as we're attacking them or supporting solar and wind, we can be as sloppy as we want. We don't have to be at all precise. Now, again, this is a fundamental thing because people are, now remember the, the example I gave about the hottest year ever? Like it's the hottest year ever, but it's really like more like the fattest year ever if you gain a hundredth of a pound. Like it's just not that much warming. The reason people will say things like that is because they're not precise. There's not a commitment to knowing how significant the warming is. But imagine you could program them and instead of saying things like climate change is real or hottest year ever, they would want to quantify things precisely. And, and if they say, oh, we have alternatives, they would want to quantify precisely, okay, how good are those and for what use cases are those good? I mean, one, one that is insane that people get away with is they talk about capacity. You know, this idea of capacity of solar and capacity of wind. Like they rate, they put a nameplate on something that says, basically this has a capacity of 100, or let's say 10 megawatts, if the sun shone 24 hours a day. What universe, we're not in outer space, right? This is never going to happen. And they'll say, oh, well, the, we installed 10 megawatts of solar and that will replace 10 megawatts of nuclear. Like, this is just nonsense. But people have an idea that it's okay to be sloppy as long as you're against fossil fuels and nuclear and hydro. So that, that's, that's another part of the hydro, the sloppiness. But the good news is no one believes that it's actually okay. They, they have an eye. That's part of the framework, but once it's visible, nobody believes it's okay. So for example, if I talk about Paris Climate Accord, so let's say I, I get them to agree that we agree we have to look at the pros and cons, and then the next thing I'll follow it up with is, and do you agree that we have to look at them as precisely as we can? Like when we talk about sea level rise, we have to be clear, do we mean 20 feet in 30 years like Al Gore says, or two feet in 100 years like the UN says? And then when we talk about uh, you know, the, the benef restricting fossil fuels, we have to be, you know, alternatives, we have to be clear, are these alternatives that can replace them on a minor scale or are these alternatives that can really replace them for a world of seven and a half billion people or three billion people don't have energy? So you see, if I set that up, if you set it up that way, everyone will agree we have to be precise. Right? Nobody will say, no, I, wanna be, I demand a license to be sloppy. I get to be as vague as I want. Nobody will say that, but that's how everybody works. Unless they have the discipline of you uh, framing it. So even at this stage, the way I think of it is, if I get, say, a positive, get positive agreement on being even-handed or unbiased, and if I get positive agreement on being precise and not sloppy, I have turned the person that I'm talking to into one of the best energy thinkers in the world. And I'm serious about that because most people who know a lot about energy are still, and I include very smart people, like they're still very biased and sloppy in their thinking. So in terms of the actual thinking method, you can make an enormous amount of progress. Any questions about that one? So the other Why? Convincing people to be to think their way, because they can be sloppy, and these people don't have to put any effort into it to know reality. Can you? I'm not. I don't quite understand. Can you give an example? Okay. So if they sit there and say the sea levels are going to rise in 20 foot in the 30 years, mm -hmm. okay, they go like, "Ooh, I believe all that." Instead of 
looking at the real data that shows, okay, they're coming up this much. Or if you tell someone that solar has just as many cons mm -hmm. as oil and gas, they're like, oh, you have to prove that. Well, well, okay, at this stage, we're not saying anything about the merits or not of any technology. We're just getting them to agree to the playing field. Because if we get them to agree to the playing field, then if we do our jobs properly, they're going to be embarrassed to just reflexively believe that sea level rises are by 20 feet. Because part of what we're going to do, and you'll see this as we go, is we're going to, we're going to make clear that it is very important to human life to make the right choice. And if you exaggerate the side effects of something then, and restrict that thing, then you're depriving people of the benefits. So what, what's going to happen is they're going to think about it in terms of, oh, if I exaggerate sea level rise and restrict fossil fuels and make it harder for billions of people to get energy, then I'm depriving people of refrigeration and food and clothing and shelter. So it's just as emotional an issue. The, the reason why it seems OK to talk about 20-foot sea level rises is because the bias. People think the only thing to think about with fossil fuels is how bad are they. So if you're only thinking about how bad are they, then who cares if you exaggerate? Like, imagine that you find out tomorrow, there's a news story tomorrow, heroin is 10% less dangerous than we believed. Like, who cares, right? Because you kind of, uh, you know, you know that it's, it's not good for human life. And so fossil fuel people say, oh, well, sea level rises aren't as bad as you think, but nobody's looking at the positive, then nobody cares. But if they realize, oh, there's a huge positive, which means there's a negative to restricting it, then you have to think about both. The same thing with the vaccines and the side effects. If, if people are just talking about side effects and they exaggerate them and nobody's focusing on the benefits, then it just seems like, oh, well, he's just a well-intentioned person. But if they're exaggerating the side effects and depriving kids of vaccines that they need, then it's, oh, this is a crank who's killing kids. So that's how I want people to think of Al Gore, a crank who's killing kids.